This is our 512 frame. This is the most popular chassis we have right now for channeled Model A's. It sets you about six to seven inches off the ground and it has a five inch kick up in the front and a 12 inch kick up in the rear. And we also offer this channeled floor structure, which helps you locate and channel the body. Here's the 3031 coupe body that we're gonna be channeling using our subfloor kit. It had a recessed firewall in it. We went ahead and installed a stock style firewall. because That's what this one's gonna be set up best with. And uh, we'll be removing most of this floor. You get to keep a decent amount of sub rail. That's what our substructure attaches to. Uh, we'll be notching the wheel wells for axle clearance. And we'll also be notching the firewall for frame clearance. Uh, frame rail is going to come in right about through here. And our frame is about 28 and 3 quarters of an inch wide at the firewall location, which is right about here. And we like to go with an extra quarter inch of clearance per side. So we'll go ahead and notch the firewall to 29 and a quarter inches wide. And on the height, uh, since the frame already starts kicking up right there, we're going to go ahead and notch the height on that four and a half inches up. And we'll be measuring that from the lower corner here, which this one had a recessed firewall, so they've already cut a lot of the stuff off. But if you have a stock 3031, you will have the front body mount there. And you can actually measure from that body mount. So we're going to go four and a half up. And we're going to go 29 and a quarter inches wide. All right, we have the firewall marked out at 29 and a quarter inches wide, four and a half inches up. And that'll give us approximately a quarter inch gap around the frame. If you want to run less of a gap, you can go ahead and narrow that dimension and bring it down a little bit. And then you can trim it up uh, to your liking after you start fitting the body. Uh, so we'll go ahead and cut that stuff out right now. All right, we have the front notched out. And if you have a stock body, you're gonna have a body mount that comes down right here and flips up. What you're gonna end up doing is notching all the way down there. And then basically you can just have your cut come back and you can just leave it because what we're gonna do is we're gonna mark from the inside and match it up with our cut line there. Next up, we're gonna go ahead and cut the sub rails and that way we can go ahead and start fitting our sub floor. Uh, our sub floor actually attaches right in along here. So we're actually gonna cut along that bottom corner and then we're gonna bring that all the way up to that edge there. We're gonna follow this line all the way back and go to that rear vertical support. We have the inside marked out. What we're gonna be doing is cutting right along the inside of that tape there. We're gonna go ahead and cut into that corner here. Follow it all the way back. And then as it transitions from this corner, we're gonna go ahead and come up and then follow the inside of that tape straight back. And then we're gonna go ahead and cut sideways here right in front of that rear vertical support. And on the inside, whenever you're marking it out, uh, what we're gonna be doing is cut along this edge and follow it up here. But on this one, since they recessed the firewall, they had already taken out these floorboard brackets. And uh, so what we recommend is actually removing them and it'll make it a little easier. If not, that's in there you can see where we're gonna be cutting that thing going up there to match up with this line here now if this is still in there you have to cut up across here and then notch it out and you can do that uh, it's a little bit more work but uh, you can do it either way you can remove it or you can notch it up and bring it across you also need to notch the B pillar wood at the bottom uh, you'll want to measure two and a quarter inches up and go ahead and cut that all the way and get that bottom chunk out if you're going to be replacing the wood, I recommend pulling that piece now. And then whenever you reinstall the new wood, you can just shorten it up and then reinstall it. And then uh, the reason why we do that is on the channel floor structure, there's a tab right here. And this actually goes into the B pillar. So you'll need to notch the wood. All right, I went ahead and test fit our channeled sub floor. And you can see I have already notched the B pillar wood that actually goes inside and pull that out and you can see how that goes and then also you can see how this lays in here with the sub rail and uh, next what we'll be doing is we'll actually be cutting across there and then across this seam here and then bring it all the way to the back
you'll need a notch for the rear axle clearance. Since this is a 12 inch kick up in the rear, we're gonna need at least a 12 inch notch. And then uh, we give an extra half inch on the notch for articulation of the rear axle. So uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna notch this one 12 and a half inches up. Uh, we're gonna use a four inch hole saw. So I went ahead and uh, punched that hole already there. That's at 10 and a half inches high. So by the time we use that hole saw, it'll be at 12 and a half. And uh, on the 3031 coupes, the front edge of that bead is actually the axle center. And if you're not sure where your axle, axle center is supposed to be, if you have our structure, what you can do is you can measure from the center of your rear axle to the front edge of the structure here, and then add about an eighth of an inch. And then you can go ahead and measure from the front edge of the body, bringing it back to the, bot, the wheel well here, and then you can go ahead and mark that as your center. Alright, we have the sub rails cut, we have the rear notched for the axle clearance, we remove the rear panel, and uh, we're getting ready to drop the body on it and test fit it. Uh, another thing you may want to do ahead of time is right here between the B pillar and the A pillar, uh, we punch some holes there about every two inches apart. We're going to go ahead and rosette weld that to the subfloor, and then also punch a couple holes there on the B pillar. That'll also be rosette welded to the subfloor. And then uh, we cleaned up a little bit here around the A pillar and a section for the back of the main structure right there on top of the sub rail. That also gets welded to the subfloor. We went ahead and test fit the subfloor. You can see the section here that goes into the B pillar and it fits along that edge here. And then uh, you'll see in the front, you'll see a little bit of interference in that corner when we try to pull this up to where it needs to go. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and notch this out right here so that way the subfloor doesn't interfere. Here we have the body set over the frame and we went ahead and started installing the subfloor setup. We did is we went ahead and put them into place and then bolted them to the frame and then to bring the body up to the right height and to square everything up we ran these two bars across and then the way to get it up level to where it needs to be use a piece of two inch tubing and a 3 16 shim and then clamp that in place for the front and for the rear and then that bar keeps everything flat across and then in the rear section use a clamp just like that tacked in the subfloor just tacked it in right there on the top on the a pillar and then went ahead and did the two plug welds there on the b pillar and uh, next up we'll go ahead and, and move to the back and we will line the doors and trim the rear brackets we went ahead and trimmed the tab off the front and we went ahead and ground that tab off the rear and gave it a little extra clearance so that way it sit flush against there but before we tack it in, we're going to go ahead and uh, line the doors. The way we do that is we jack up underneath that rear cross support. And uh, we'll go ahead and show you what it does here. So right now you can see that door is low. And go ahead and jack up the back. You can see it'll actually help align that. So once you get them aligned where you want, what you're going to want to do is come back here. And then take a measurement from here to this bottom edge. And then uh, check the other side also, and you want to get them pretty close, I'd say within a sixteenth of an inch. And then uh, once you get those leveled and you get your doors where you like, you can go ahead and tack the rear brackets in. Another thing you want to do before you actually tack these in is pull a measurement from the bottom of the sub rails to this edge here. So that way you can level those off. That way they're both the same side to side because they do have some flex to them. So you can uh, get a measurement, get those where you, where you like them where they both match up and then go ahead and tack them on in. We have it up on the lift now and you can look underneath there and you can see where we have the holes punched and we're gonna go ahead and attach that to the subfloor. And you see this side, we have it clamped and ready to weld together. We 
have all the rosette welds done here on the lower part of the sub rail. And since we had it on the lift, we went ahead and welded the bottom side of these other brackets. And then uh, got the back of this one here too. And then we also got the inside of that one there. Here's a look at the inside after it's been welded in. We got the A pillars welded. B pillars been plug welded in. This rear section here has been welded in. And the rear brackets have also been welded in. 